we begin with the basics. The magnetic field of a single moving point charge Q. We call the location of the charge the source point and the point P where we want to find the field the field point. In our study of electric fields we found that E, the electric field of a point charge Q at a field point located a distance R from the charge is proportional to Q and to the inverse square 1 over R squared and that its direction for positive Q is along the line from the source point to the field point. The corresponding relationship for the magnetic field B of a point charge Q moving with velocity V has some similarities to this relationship and some interesting differences. First experiments show that the magnitude of the magnetic field B is again proportional to Q and to the inverse square but the direction of the magnetic field B is not along the line from the source point to the field point. Instead it is perpendicular to the plane containing this line and the particles velocity vector V as shown in the diagram. In this case we got the field point P and the source Q and, and the force is not actually directed from Q to the field point P uh, as it is in the uh, electric field vector. In this case it points uh, at right angles to this line here and you can see there's another plane there and it's pointing at right angles, that's pointing down and then you can see that this two part plane here and then over here you can see it's pointing down. Instead it is perpendicular to the plane containing this line and the particles velocity vector v as shown in the figure. Furthermore the field magnitude is proportional to the sine of the angle theta between these two directions Thus the magnitude of the magnetic field at point P is given by this equation here. So we find that that's the magnitude of this, this vector, where K is a proportionality constant. We can incorporate both the mag magnitude and direction of the magnetic field B into a single vector equation. First we introduce a unit vector. So if we introduce this, you can see there's R, the direction from the source to the P. If we define that as a unit vector first of all. Uh, we just take the vector and divide it by its magnitude. That gives us the unit vector in the direction from the, the source charge Q to the field point P. This vector here, the magnetic field vector at the field point P, is actually given by the cross product of the velocity uh, crossed with the unit vector R. So. Uh, this velocity that is parallel, if, these, if this is down here and they're parallel then obviously the sign of zero is, uh, is zero. Uh, at any distance r from q the magnetic field B has its greatest magnitude at points lying in the plane through the charge perpendicular to V because at all such points theta equals 90. Recall that the field lines for the electric field at a point charge radiate outward from the charge the magnetic field lines are completely different in character. Review of the above discussion shows that for a point charge moving with velocity v, the magnetic field lines are circles with centers along the line of v, lying in planes perpendicular to the line. The direction of these lines are given a right hand rule. We grasp the velocity vector v with our right hand so that your thumb points in the direction of the velocity vector v your fingers then curl around the line. What we're doing here is we point our thumb here. So let's say that this is the charge moving along this line here. So if we point our thumb in that direction, then where our, our fingers are curling round, that's the direction the magnetic field lines will be going in. So you can see in this case, you've got the arrow there, the charge moving across. You can see that the field lines are, are making circles around this this uh, path where the charge is, is, is moving. The units of the magnetic field B are one tesla, where one tesla equals uh, one newton second per coulomb per metre, which uh, can re be reduced down to uh, newton per amp metre. And the units of uh, proportionality constant K dash are one tesla per amp metre. Uh, 
The numerical value of K dash is exactly 10 to the minus 7 Teslas per amp meter. In electrostatics we found to express electric field relations in terms of epsilon naught where K equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Similarly in magnetic field relations it's convenient to introduce a constant mu naught defined by the relation K dashed equals mu naught over 4 pi thus mu naught equals 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 teslas per amp meter. In terms of uh, mu u naught with using the k dash u naught over 4 pi and down here u naught over 4 pi here we can now write the expression uh, for a magnetic force between two point charges both of which are in motion relative to an observer a charge q dash moving with velocity v dashed in a magnetic field b is given by this force equation here well, using this equation we've plugged in this and that gives us f u naught over 4 pi q v naught crossed with this b part here okay and that uh, this then gives us uh, an equation which is completely analogous to coulomb's law f is the force exerted on q dash by q and r hat is in the direction from q toward q dash what if we have several point charges for electric fields, we could take the vector sum of the electric fields of the individual charges and experiments will show that this also works for magnetic fields. That is, if the magnetic field also obeys the superposition principle, the total magnetic field caused by several moving charges is the vector sum of the fields caused by individual charges. We can use this fact to calculate the field caused by a current in a circuit in terms of the fields caused by individual segments of, of the conductor. We develop this relationship in the next section.